Hey, uh, welcome to the Political Vigilante. I'm Graham Elwood. Welcome to all the new people that have joined uh, from Aggressive Progressive, which I was just on with Jimmy Dore. Um, I love doing that show. <laughs> I, I, I got mad and afterwards I was like, man, I hope that wasn't too much. He goes, no, man, it's called aggressive progressive. I want you to be aggressive. I want you to get pissed off that you lost your house. So, uh, which I am, I'm very mad about it. <laughs> so uh, I want to talk about this article that was in uh, politico.com um, that came out. Uh, the media bubble is worse than you think. And it was by Jack Schaefer and Tucker Doherty. So it, it's an interesting article and there's some interesting statistics in it. And it talks about there's a media bubble and it says it, it most of the mainstream media is concentrated on the East Coast and the West Coast where all the money is. It also gives a great statistic here of um, how new jobs were increasingly clustered in blue counties. And it shows 2008 and 2016, how by 2016, only um, like 70 some percent of new jobs were in blue counties where only like 27% were in red counties. And it, it shows why Hillary lost because it's also saying the majority of the media, like only 7% of mainstream media uh, call themselves Republicans. And how um, calling the media, you know, Trump used that a lot. The media is in the bag for Hillary, and he wasn't wrong. But what this article kind of doesn't go into, it goes into jobs and it goes into how newspapers um, have, you know, obviously newspapers are on the decline, but internet news is uh, increasing. This show, for example. Um, and it was talking about how newspapers were, you know, all throughout the country. And so you could have a good newspaper in a, in a small or mid-sized town, you know, not didn't have to be some giant city like Chicago or New York or Los Angeles or something. It could be in Omaha, you could have a good paper in Denver, you could have a good paper in Dallas or something like that, um, which is, is valid. And it talks about the, um, how there was the internet, um, I'll say this, the old newspaper business model almost prevented this kind of clustering except for the national uh, broadsheets, the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and, and, and the such. Um, and how the internet is supposed to kind of open this up because now a paper in Sioux Falls, South Dakota can put everything on the internet and anyone can read it. So if some journalist in Sioux Falls comes up with some great story or some great angle on something, we all get to learn about it. I've done stories like I from, I did one from a Dallas paper about cattle ranchers in Texas who were being affected by Trump's immigration. Uh, I did stories of when I was in Wisconsin from a local Wisconsin paper. And that's a great example of how the internet can do that. But the, the overall thing that this story misses, and it, I'll put the link below, is the fact that there's six multinational conglomerates that own 90, almost 95% of all media. That's the real issue. So when Comcast, which owns MSNBC and they own HBO, so then John Oliver badmouths Jill Stein and her donations go down when she starts threatening Clinton's base. When, and I was just on the Aggressive Progressive listening to Crystal Ball did that thing in 2014, three years ago, she was on MSNBC and said, I have a lot of respect for Hillary Clinton, but she should not run. She's bad and here's why. And oh my God, you watch what she says and it's like, oh, she was so on point three years ago. Then, and then she tells the story when we were on Aggressive Progressive how MSNBC kind of slowly, you know, she were nervous about her talking about Hillary. So it's, again, this story sort of misses the fact that yes, there is a media bubble, but it's a corporate media bubble. And it's fake neoliberals. It's not, it's not, it's, well, they're neoliberals. They're fake liberals. They're not real like progressives. They're corporate liberals they're you know so they just think hillary clinton is better than trump you know it's it's and had we if hillary would have won the presidency we'd still be sending rockets 
into Syria, we'd still be trying to get Assad out of there. The difference is everyone would probably be cheering for it even more than they are with Trump and the rockets would have rainbow flags on them. But that's what this article misses is how everything is corporate. Everything is corporate. And they're pushing the corporate agenda. The reason why, and we also talked about this on on Aggressive Progressive, like why CNN has Bill Nye science guy and then it has a climate change denier and they're on equal footing. Well, let's hear both sides because CNN can't just go, climate change is real. It was called global warming and then they had to polish that up. CNN can't just go, it's it's global warming, it's happening, we need to do something about it. They, they make it equal footing so that there's this question, why? Because look who's buying ad time on CNN. I've talked about this before. Exxon Mobil is buying ad time on CNN and MSNBC and ABC and all those stations. So of course they're gonna lean in and go, you just need a, just need a hair of doubt. That's what this article misses. It's worth reading because there's, as I get, it, 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 it shows some stuff, a newspaper publishing jobs, and it shows a map of where they're concentrated and stuff like that. And where the, the difference between newspaper is more spread out and internet and broadcasting jobs are more centralized in giant cities. And that's about it. So, but, but it's, it's, and there is a bubble. And all those journalists do hang out with each other. And they might be left leaning, but they're, they're, they're leaning towards the corporate Democrat left, which isn't a real progressive left. It's a corporate left. And that's why they support that they're all pro war. When the Syria thing came out, as I've talked about, they all went pro war. And that's what this article completely misses. So we can't lose sight of the giant corporations and how they're, they're slowly infusing their narrative. And as I've quoted before in Chris Hedges' Death of the Liberal Class, they've started the propaganda machine in World War I. This will open your eyes, you read that book. The propaganda machine started in World War I. Woodrow Wilson hired this guy, George Creel, to, and he used the media, he used artists, and Hedges goes into, um, you know, basically decade after decade of how then art used to be about challenging. Art in the in the 1910s and the 20s and 30s was challenging. It was political. It made you think. It was about, let's have a political discussion. Universities were like that. Let's have a debate. Let's have it. Let's get into this discussion. And now art has been completely sanitized. You know, it's, and, and YouTube is doing it to me in this their show. They're demonetized. They just demonetized another, another show about, um, I did a video last week about child exploitation. And I, I cited this specific uh, case that this happened in, in Canada in December. They arrested 300 some people or whatever who were you know doing child pornography and all this awful stuff. And at the end of the, the video, I gave a phone number of if you know about any child exploitation, here's a number to call, here's how you can get involved. So YouTube demonetized that video because it's offensive for their advertisers. So their advertisers don't want to support ending child exploitation and what's happened on YouTube. So if I was just doing cat videos, there'd be ads all over the place. But if I talk about Syria or bombing or anything like that, it gets demonetized because entertainment is not supposed to question anything. It is supposed to be bland and Kardashian and the voice and America's got talent. That's what it's supposed to be because the corporate state wants it that way. And the corporate state controls the media. And it's not that there's a bunch of liberals running the media. It's that the left has been bought and sold by the corporate state. And so there's no resistance to the right. And this article misses the point. And the corporate media, <laughs> like I, I can't make as much money off of these because I, I got to either put in the title, I got to misspell Syria, C-E-R-I-A, and it won't get as much search. It won't go in the search engine of YouTube, so less people will see it and it won't get, make as much money. So me, I either have to, or I put Syria in the title, even with the dashes, it gets demonetized. I know it sounds like I'm rambling, but this all actually relates to this article and how they missed it at Politico, because he's part of the media. <laughs> So the way to do this is to cut your cable and not give them money and to go to Patreon 
and support me and support independent media because then you can't let giant companies like Comcast and Google that owns YouTube censor. That's a subtle form of, that's not subtle, it's a very uh, blatant form of censorship by telling me I can't make money if I talk about anything unsavory like how awful America's drone strikes are for people living in the Middle East and how many civilians we've killed. You see how this all relates? Everything I'm talking to relates. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe and stay vigilant.